Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am back from a week-long vacation. I was in Disney World celebrating my granddaughter's fifth birthday. Happy birthday, Melody, again. Wow. And I'm back to address the question that I've been hearing a lot from clients, friends, and, and, and many viewers. And it's in regards to why when I petition a certain Orisha, Lua, a spirit, or saint, I do not get the answer that I want. And there are different reasons why you might not be getting the answers to your prayers or to your petition. And one of those may be that you are petitioning the wrong Orisha, the wrong Lua, the wrong spirit, and you're not petitioning a spirit that is part of your spiritual um, cuadro espiritual. So that might be one. The second um, can be that you are petitioning also the wrong spirit in charge of that certain thing that you want. And third, that you're going totally wrong about it. And the problem with this is that if you don't have a teacher, if you don't have a spiritual teacher, you can make a lot of mistakes. And mistakes in the spiritual world can cost you. And you can call upon, you can open the door that that may be very difficult to close. I always say that the spiritual world is not nothing to be played with. There's nothing to be messed around with. Um, it's best to take your time with it and develop properly. First of all, you start with your ancestors. There is no skipping your ancestors. You cannot avoid, you cannot go from step one to step 10 and just avoid the, the whole ancestor thing and just, you know, go straight to calling on your spirits. You must take care of your ancestors. They are here before us. We have the gifts we have because of them. We inherited a lot of our gifts from them. And, and they are number one teachers. They are the best teachers that, that anyone can have. So basically, you must take care of your ancestors first. And it's very simple. It's very simple. If you don't have the room, if you don't have um, the space to make a service for your ancestors, take a glass of water and a candle. Um, I have told people, you know, I don't know if a lot would agree with this, but I mean, the important thing is to take care of them. If you live near where they are buried, take them flowers, talk to them, involve them in your life, tell them what's bothering you, tell them the problems that you're having. That's what they're there for, to help you in your spiritual life, to help you in your physical life, in your family life. So... If you don't have the space, besides taking care of them in the cemetery or if they're very far, then you could still do this. Just a glass of water. My Negrita once told me that sometimes with a glass of water and a candle, you can resolve a lot of problems. And she's proven that to me in different situations. So basically, lighting them a candle and offering them a glass of water and, and telling them, I offer this glass of water to my ancestors, known and unknown, to those from my mother's side, to those from my father's side. If you don't know the names, of, sometimes we don't know the names of, of all the deceased family members, and we don't know the ones that, we don't know the names of the ones that came before us. So just say those who walked before me, who walked this earth before me, but their blood runs through my veins. I call upon you, and I offer you this glass of water. I offer you this candle, and I ask for your help. Please help me, guide me. I want to rekindle that connection between you and I. I need your help, I need your assistance. You don't have to go into a whole big prayer. I always say, talk to your spirits, talk to your ancestors, like you used to talk to them when they were alive. Just because they crossed over doesn't mean you have to change the way you speak to them. It doesn't mean that you have to find sophisticated words and, and, and nothing like that. To speak from your heart. The best prayer is the one that comes from your heart. And and you take it from there. You take it step by step from there. Just, I mean, do this every Monday. Glass of water. You could put it in, even in your kitchen. I mean, 
You understand? You put it in the kitchen. You put it away in the bathroom. Any place. Just for Monday. And then you take that glass of water after the candle. The small Sabbath candles. Not the big candles. After that candle turns off, take the glass of water and place it high. You raise them high so they can help lift you up. You lift them up so they can lift you up. The ancestors help us a lot. They come in our dreams. They guide us and help us. My father personally has helped me so much, so much after he crossed over. And I am so grateful um, when he comes to, to me in my dreams and give me advice. I talk to him all the time. I speak to my mother also. Um, and that has helped me a lot. It helped me with the healing to accept um, his crossing over. It helped me to understand more about death. It brings you more peace into your life when you understand more about the spiritual world. So um, what I'm trying to say is do not skip. Start with your ancestors. You can avoid a lot, a lot of mistakes, a lot of headaches. And you can also avoid bringing into your life entities that you do not want to mess with. So do not skip your ancestors. I know a lot of people feel attracted to a legua. A lot of them, oh, I want, I want to serve as a legua. But one, another thing you have to remember is we do not choose our spirits. They choose us. Our guides choose us. The Lua choose you. The Orishas choose you. You do not choose them. Sometimes you could petition in Orisha or Lua, give them offerings and petition them and petition them, and you do not get any results, then it's time to look into that. Maybe that spirit, maybe that Orisha, maybe that Lua does not walk with you. So it's very important to contact someone that has knowledge, that can guide you. This is one path that I've known you cannot do it alone. You cannot work alone. Your ancestors will guide you to the right teacher, to the right person if you ask. Just say plainly. You don't have to um, call upon a specific spirit. Just say, I call upon my guardian angels and spirit guides and protecting spirits. Please guide me to the right person, to the right teacher. And just let it go. Just let it go. Patience is the key in developing spiritually. If you don't have patience, you ain't getting no results. You have to have patience. You have to believe that they can hear you because they can. You have to believe that they will answer. The right spirits will answer. The ones that walk with you will answer you. But you can force, you cannot force a spirit to answer your petition if that spirit does not walk with you. Um, that spirit is in charge of everything, different areas of our lives of helping us. Like I said, I know a lot of people love Elegua, but they are different gatekeepers. There are different gatekeepers out there to help us. Not only Elegua, not only Papa Legba. Some of us have different gatekeepers. Sometimes your spirit guide can also be your gatekeeper. Sometimes an ancestor can be your gatekeeper. And like I always say, don't isolate yourself to one religion. Open, keep an, an open mind. In the spirit, there's no religion in the spiritual world. So keep an open mind. When you isolate yourself to one thing, you're blocking yourself from learning spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Don't focus just on one um, Lua, Orisha, or spirit. Open yourself up. That's what spiritism is all about. Opening yourself up to connecting with the spiritual world. And allowing the spirits to come to you. Not you to them. Allowing them to come to you. To say, my spiritual guides, I am open and willing to receive your guidance. Because we must also remember we have free will. So unless we call upon them, they will not come to us. So you open yourself up. Say, my spiritual guides, my guardian angel, I seek your help. I need your help. Please guide me on my spiritual path. Please help me develop spiritually. And don't focus on 
what the other person has, that the other person can see spirits, that the other person can hear spirits, that the other person can feel spirits. No, because we are all are meant to do different things in this world. Yes, I can see them. Yes, I can feel them. Yes, I can hear them. Yes, my spirits could heal through me. But not everybody has the same gift. We all are born with different gifts. God will send you the right teachers to help you develop those gifts. And you will do wondrous work with the gift that was given to you. Do not worry about what somebody else does. Focus on you developing your gift. Um, strengthen your gift. Because when you focus on a path that is not yours, you're going to get lost. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get angry. And you're going to be upset with yourself. And sometimes there's people that even get upset with the spirits. And they have nothing to do with it. Because we're trying to force something that is not. That is not in our life. The advice that I give you is start with your ancestors. You will avoid a lot of headaches, a lot of mistakes, and attracting a lot of entities that you do not want in your life. Focus on cleansing yourself and focus on taking care of your ancestors. Do the service for your ancestors. I will be doing another video um, showing you how to start off. But first start with your ancestors. Do not skip. Because then you cannot blame me and tell me, oh, I haven't connected with my guys. They haven't come to me in my dreams. Because if you skip, it's on you. You have to start with your ancestors. Okay? Take at least even a month and give it time. And write down anything they tell you in your dreams. Whatever they reveal to you in your dreams, if they come to you in your dreams, write it down. Keep a journal. And then from then, when you're strong enough and you let go of everything else, we will start, I will teach you how to connect with your guides, how to open that door to connect with your guides in a safe way. Because if you go and do this on your own, like I said, you are prone to open a door that you later cannot close. And you can attract entities that can cost you. It can cost you peace of mind. It can cost you your health. So it's very important that you take it one step at a time. You can't rush this. You cannot rush your spiritual awakening. You cannot rush your spiritual development. Okay? So I hope um, this has shed some light and it has brought also peace of mind to those that are, that are trying to get on the spiritual path. And like I said, do not limit yourself to any religion. The spirit, there's no religion in the spiritual world. Just open yourself up allow the spirits to come because if you limit yourself to one religion you're closing all the doors keep an open mind keep an open heart may god bless you and guide you always i always ask share this video subscribe and do not forget to give me a thumbs up and thank you for watching love and light to you